you like to hear about the first person in the entire universe who physically touched Rasulullah before anyone else? She is Barak. She's the first one to lay hands on Rasulullah when he was born. An Ethiopian lady. She was only about nine or ten years old. Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib was extremely generous. He looked after Baraka as if she was his daughter. And Amina bint Wahab, the mother of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa she looked after her as if she was her daughter. So Baraka was raised among them. There's one thing to note about Baraka radiallahu anha. She hardly spoke. She was also extremely optimistic. Anything that happened, she always interpreted it in a good way. And Amina bint Wahab could not need anyone more than subhanallah Baraka in her life. Only in about a few months, Amina bint Wahab, she became pregnant and she saw a dream as though sunlight was emanating coming out of her belly and it lighted up the city of Mecca all the way to Iraq. So she woke up and the first person she came to was who? Not her husband, Barak. She said to her, Ya Barak, come here, I've seen this dream. It lighted up throughout Mecca all the way to Yathrib and Iraq. What do you think this is? And Baraka's first words were this, she smiled and put her hand on her shoulder, saying to her, Ya Amina, this is a sign from above the heavens. You have someone important inside of you. The first woman to make this good news, the first woman to work it out. In fact, the first person on the face of the earth to work out that there is an important man, more beloved and more special than anyone on the face of the earth to come. Then came the day close to Syria, Abdullah died. Now, can you imagine Amina, his wife? She was left alone, widowed, not knowing, not seeing her husband died far away near Syria and she's pregnant and she's sick already with the pregnancy. Hearing about her husband Abdullah dying, she was grieved for more than two months straight. So Baraka said to her, calm down. Wallahi, this dream that you had, remember? It is only good news. Allah is with you. They knew who Allah was. They worshipped Allah, but they worshipped alongside of them idols. And when she gave birth to Rasulullah Baraka was the midwife of Am. There was no one else. Baraka was the first one to lay eyes on Rasulullah The first one to touch him. The first one to see, to smile to him. The first one to make the following comment. Oh Amina, Wallahi, he is more beautiful than the moon. Allahu Akbar, Ya Amina, I told you, your dream has come true. Time passed and Rasulullah became six years old. But Amina, she became ill in Al Abwa and she brought Baraka towards him. She said to her, Ya Baraka, I'm about to pass away. I entrust Muhammad to you. Be to him a mother the way I was and better. For Wallahi, I do not trust anyone else who can carry this role. Baraka then went with Rasulullah and raised him. Now she was like a mother, and those who describe the relationship is kind of a funny one. It's like this child who speaks to his mother like a friend. He used to joke with her, she used to joke with him, lightheartedly. At the age of 25, Rasulullah became married to Khadija. He said to Khadija, This is Baraka, she is my mother after my mother. So then she went and married this man, I forgot his name, from Medina, and Allah gave her a child named Ayman. And so she was known as Ummu Ayman. Ummu Ayman lived with Abu Ayman for about two years, and he died in a battle. So she became widowed again, back to the house of Rasulullah but this time with a child, Ayman. And Ayman was a child raised in the household of Rasulullah So he was among the young Sahabis. Then he said to the people, who wants to marry a woman of Jannah? They all put their hands up. He said, good, she is my mother after my mother. All the hands went down. But Zayd radiallahu anhu kept his hand. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I will marry her. He said, you'll marry a woman of paradise? He said, no one but her, Ya Rasulullah. So she married Zayd radiallahu anhu and from him came Usama. And so she had her son Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu, another young companion like Anas and like Abdullah ibn Abbas and like Ayman and the rest. She grew up radiallahu anha and she was one of the people of paradise. The one whom the family of Rasulullah could not live without and the one whom Rasulullah found comfort with after the death of Abu Talib, Khadija and the other people around him.